Like it's and uh, meeting is now streaming live. Look right. at that. We're doing it. Yeah, we're we're there. What's up, Facebook? Uh, <laughs> what's up, Facebook? I'm here with the uh, the one and only Orlando Real Producer, Orlando Branding, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, Aaron Luden. So, hey, man, how's it going? It's crazy. It's going well, though. It's going really well. We've been we've been slammed. So uh, it's definitely been an interesting experience for sure. People are trying to take advantage of some opportunities. And uh, yeah, anyway. Still out and about, huh? I'm I'm here. I'm staying here. I'm staying in quarantine. This is actually my third month in quarantine, I, I like to say, because I spent all of February basically in hospitals or here back at home when I checked out. And then most of March, basically, I spent in the house in recovery. And then uh, obviously we've been stuck here. So, and you know, I, I've got good I, practice. <laughs> I had never, I had never met you personally until now. We've talked on the phone. We've talked through Facebook. We've done all that stuff, but I know, um, I know what happened to you. So just to know that you're up and running and, and speaking and talking and living and back doing what you love. God bless you, man. That's good. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So, uh, so I know obviously Orlando Real Producers has been great for you to network and it's become a huge thing. And right now, obviously more difficult with the virtual side, but most importantly is, uh, is your branding company. I know right now, a lot of people don't really know how to brand themselves or how to stay relevant or, or what to do in these times to kind of adjust or shift or pivot or whatever it might be. So what are you doing? What are you advising your, your clients? What are you doing yourself? Well, I think the big thing is just to make sure that you're staying grounded and you're staying focused on the right things. You know, I went through this uh, webinar the other day and, and I've, I've shown the model a bunch of times. I'll try to pull it up in a second. But basically, most leaders, what they need to do is stay grounded and face reality and focus on what they can focus to drive the business. And so they need to stay connected with people. They need to stay grounded and they need to stay truthful to the situation. So that situation may mean that you're not running business as usual. It may mean that you can't run business as usual in a lot of industries. And so what I've been telling a lot of our clients is that in the end of the day, relationships are the insulation to your business. They're, they're the insulation that keeps you where you are is the, really the depth and the width and the authenticity of your relationships is what will actually pull you through any hard time, not just this hard time, but really any hard time is the number of people that really care. And so, mm -hmm. um, you know, and my good friend, Curtis Lucy always says relationships are the real currency of life. And so I really believe it's the truth. And so right now, what people really need to be focused on are their key relationships, their past clients, their database, their referral partners, their friends, their community, whatever that means, whatever it looks like to you. And um, a lot of people, I mean, I don't know about you, but how many people, how many people have called you, Daniel, that, and actually just said, how are you doing without something to sell you, something to tell you about, something to promote? Like how many people have actually called you genuinely just to check in and see how you're doing through this time? Yeah, I mean, just uh, maybe a handful of, of the closest friends that I've known um, exactly. And so nothing, and, and, other than that, nothing really, I mean, a text here and there. Exactly. And so being that person that's willing to reach out, willing to have, even when it's a difficult conversation, willing to ask them how they need help, willing to offer help, willing to just listen if they just need to vent, or maybe they're feeling emotional and they want to go off and, the, and you're going to be the person to hear it. And it's a nuisance, but you know, like being the person that's there for them shows them that you actually give a, you know what? And not sure. that you're just care about them as a client or care about them as a customer or a prospect, but that you actually care about them as a person. No, so, and I totally really agree good. with you. I mean, I totally agree with you. I've always come from the side of contribution. I've, I've always thought that even, uh, you know, I spent 20 years in the car business doing um, training salespeople, managing, doing things like that before I transitioned to real estate. So, <clears throat> excuse me, sales I know, and I've always... I've always believed that people buy from people, people deal with people. Um, and there's a lot of cases where there's folks that go from different companies 
but they keep their clients with them because of how well they've they've treated and and you know kept in touch and i i really do believe that if people feel like you genuinely care about them and you generally have their best interest uh i, I think it's it's great and and to just to come off what you're saying i had andy you know andy brown with climber yeah, of course <coughs> excuse me <coughs> i don't have it <laughs> and uh, <laughs> Uh, he said the same thing. He said, you know, in these times uh, in our industry, real estate, people should be just calling saying, hey, what do you need help with right now? Forget exactly. buying or selling your house. Forget issues like legit just saying, hey, what's up, man? We live in the neighborhood. We're here. Are you familiar exactly. with what's going on? What can we do? You know, exactly. Mm -hmm. and, and then also just calling the people you care about and checking in. You know, we've been and, and and none of us are perfect, I'm sure. You know, I've been trying to call through all of my clients uh, and actually just check in and see how they're doing, what they need help with. And I haven't got through all of them, to be honest, but it's the act of trying to care, trying to, you know, trying to show people that you care about them and that you're not just checking in to see. Yeah. And I mean, even just a little text, like every once in a while, um, I'll shoot a text exactly. out to friends and stuff. Hey, you doing okay? Hey, how's the family? Hey, what's going on? What can I help with? It's just something like that means a lot. Absolutely. And so, and sometimes it just needs someone to talk to you. So, so I really think that's the big thing right now. Um, reaching out to your past clients. Some people, they're really showing appreciation or showering appreciation upon their top 10% or maybe their top 10, top 20 clients uh, or referral partners. Also, some of this is employee appreciation. So we've been doing a lot of like different branded kits. Uh, there's the work from home kit. There's the, you know, random items like ear pods or ear, uh, earbuds. And like one thing that's been really popular that now is on back order till June have been uh, these phone sanitizing. They're called phone soaps, but they're branded with your info on top and they oh, use awesome. UV light to kill you know, 99% of everything. So like people are sending unique items and gifts to their top clients, not cheap crap to as many people as possible, but actually useful items to the people they care about to show them that they actually care to remind them of them. Not just company. getting a keychain. Yeah. You know, people don't get me wrong. Other people calling me asking for, you know, as many hand sanitizers as possible. Like, yeah, but in the end of the day, a lot of business owners, they make the same mistake, which is when it comes time to show appreciation to their most valuable clients and referral partners, they look for the largest quantity of the cheapest crap possible to put their logo on <laughs> as big as possible to show people how, as many people as possible, how special they are, which is totally contradictory to the point they're trying to make. So I'm of the belief that it makes more sense to double down on your top 10%, sometimes top 10, sometimes top 20, best referral partners, best people, employees, whatnot, your team, and to really send tangible items of value. And uh, so we've been helping a lot of people source just unique, high quality gifts that uh, people actually pick up, see and use, you know, not just throw away or not break. Yeah, that's you know. awesome, man. And that's, I mean, that's great, man. And I, you know, a thing I would ask you too, and and obviously this has affected everybody's business in some, <clears throat> excuse me, in some way or shape. But I know that um, you're big on social media. I see you there all the time. I see you, you know, giving shout outs. I see you doing your business there. What are uh, and I, and I know that I've seen some of your events. So right now, asking you about that. So what are your do's and don'ts? right now on social media. I see that um, you have you have done some shout outs where you're like, hey man, stay out of my shit type deal. Yeah, <laughs> just, yeah. Just ask okay. me, you know, I'll help you. Do's and don'ts on social media. So the biggest do's and don'ts I would say would be to not use this as an opportunity to spam people. To actually try, like we're all in the same boat where it's difficult to get attention from whoever our key prospects are. There's more noise. There's more clutter. There's more negativity. There's more, there's more of all these, all these things. And so in the end of the day, like you've got to basically use a, what we call a pull tactic, not a push tactic. When it comes to your marketing in general, you've got to find a way to have people be interested, not force interest onto people. 
So one of the big mistakes that I, I had went on a small little rant on Facebook about <laughs> was tagging people. Like, like if I wanted you to watch this webinar and, and I go, okay, we're doing a webinar today, tag you and 99 people that aren't on the webinar, don't have to watch the webinar, haven't committed to the webinar, have nothing to do with, you get what I'm saying? Like, just yes. because I want every one of your friends to see it. It's basically hijacking people's audiences. And that I think is just not like normal, proper Facebook etiquette. And it's also when it comes to positioning, when you want to come from a position of authority or position of strength, you don't want to come from a position of begging for attention or begging for uh, engagement. You know, it's kind of like if, um, if you're throwing a party, you want to throw a party that's full of people and people enjoy, not the party that begs everyone to come. Does that make sense? For sure, for sure. Yeah, and and I, and and tell me if I'm uh, obviously this is in your wheelhouse. What I've been trying to do is obviously I only tag the people involved with the company or the video that I'm that is coming forth, sure. right? And then when I get off, I try to share the video with different groups that I'm in, but I'm not yeah. tagging those people. That makes sense. Look, you're not letting people see your stuff isn't a problem. It's forcing people to see your stuff. Does that make sense? It's, yeah. Uh, so, so for example, this or video, you I, on their I went into on their so, reach. So if I would have went into Orlando Real Producers and I would have tagged your entire friends list, hey, there's this video coming out of me and Aaron. That well, would to be fair with you. Kill. If I'm in the video, it's a little different. It's at least more appropriate to shout. But out it's still kind of what you're saying, right? What I'm saying more is like if you every time you did an interview with somebody five times a day, you tagged <laughs> me in it, even though I'm not even the person being interviewed. You just wanted people that, that, that see my page to see your interview later with Boston Dave or to see your, <laughs> yeah. you know what I'm saying? So, that's, so that's don't, really become, don't become a nuisance, right? Yeah. And same thing with groups. You know, it's one thing to uh, create the groups or to try to invite people to a group. But I know that like sometimes Facebook lets you just add people into a group. And it's like, unless you've talked to the people, unless you've gotten their permission, quote unquote, or unless they're able to say accept or reject, then I, I just don't believe in any of those tactics that force attention. My job is to, is to uh, command it and to garner it, I guess is a better word, and sure. to attract it. And if I'm not doing a good job promoting an event, you know, if I'm not doing a good job giving a message of value, then I'm not going to pull people into what I'm doing. And it works the same with any business. It's really the same with being a real estate agent, being a you know publisher, being a, a branding person. Like in the end of the day, I'm not spamming you with, hey, look at all this cool uh, branded stuff I can do. We want to be more like a lighthouse than a tugboat. We want to, instead of trying to pull you along, we want to kind of shine our light sure. and you'll and I, see it if you want need guidance and direction. Absolutely. And, and I see that you... Um... You do do um, quite a bit of, of events because obviously that's that's kind of your wheelhouse. And um, what have you done? Obviously, there's been an adjustment in your business because people can't meet you on Church Street. So, <laughs> what have you um, what have you done to adjust and pivot and still be able to um, stay engaged with all of your partners and? and people that, that you have kind of in your yeah. core group? So really two things, um, maybe even three. So, so basically number one is the gist of what we do isn't encompassed with our monthly mastermind. So even though our, what we do is bring people together as a community, we use different tools to do it. So we use our monthly magazine. We use our Facebook communities. We use social and virtual events to do it. And our awesome. partners really support the platform because they care about the relationships with the top agents long term. And so most people would agree if you ask them that real estate long term is OK, it's going to be OK. But short term, we all have uncertainties about what's going on in the market, what's how it's going to affect our business, how it might not affect our business. How's well, it you just you don't know when it's going to end, you know, like exactly. it's the not knowing no guarantees. There's so, no, yeah, so that's, I so think in, that's in the end of the day, we still know that the top agents are going to stay the top agents and the top affiliates are going to continue to try to serve the top agents. So we're really focused on making sure that every month we put out, you know, it's a little bit harder to put out of 80 page. Well, this, you can't see this actually. Sorry. Let me try this right here. <laughs> 
it's a little bit harder to put out an 80 page publication when you can't just shoot people as easily as you used to be able to. Um, luckily, real estate agents are essential and we've got a few things, you know, the next few publications are queued up and we've got a lot more educational content that'll be inside of them from different industry experts and whatnot. But, um, but so we shift platforms. We, we did a virtual uh, mastermind on Monday where we had our entire community of partners and top agents all able to jump on and we broke them into breakouts where they could actually speak to other people in groups of three or four and just have like a conversation and share their big ideas and their takeaways and answer questions. So we didn't come to it as teachers or trainers or even uh, experts or panels. We came as the facilitators of, hey, we're gonna bring you all together. Here's the question to work on, journal your answers for a second. We're gonna put you in a group. So it was really cool to bring 91 people together. Um, so we're shifting, I would say, virtually. <laughs> and this is happening nationwide. You know, Real Producers is in, uh, 80 something, 80 plus markets right now, almost a hundred if we include the ones in ramp up. And so we're just making a shift to incorporate more digital. Uh, we don't want to necessarily do something every day or be in your face or offer too much stuff, but we want to make sure that people are continuing to come together. We're continuing to put out the publication. Uh, at least in Orlando, we're lucky because we mail directly to most people's homes, uh, not their offices and real estate agents are essential so a lot of them are going to their offices so um awesome. yeah so so let's know. say let's say i want to hire you and i want you to be my branding company i want to be in your magazine for that stuff i want to be involved in what you what you offer how do i how do i do that how do i get a hold of you how do i get in touch with you what's that process so uh so two different answers to be honest uh Orlando branding, if you're looking for, you know, branded products or brand consulting or something in the branding world, you can email me, Aaron at OrlandoBranding.com. And uh, anyone that's, you know, needs products, needs marketing materials, needs something with their logo on it, basically, we can definitely help you with that. The publication, we actually, we don't sell the space to agents. We don't sell uh, the exposure. You know, it's all based off nominations and actual sales numbers. So, for example, like every time we put an agent on the cover, like they sold over usually 25, 30 plus million. And uh, there's a rising star, there's some celebrating leadership. And so really we only work with the top agents and our clients are the partners. The, uh, and they're all referred by the other top 500 agents. So we do have a partner application, but we don't just, uh, we don't just work with everyone that wants to work with us. I, sometimes I wish it was that way. Yeah. We only work with people referred by the top 500. And so they can fill out an application and it has space for references of other top people in our community. But really, we're really picky about vetting the partners that we work with. And because of it, the agents that are part of our community, they know that if they meet one of our partners, they've already went through a vetting process. They've been referred by a top agent and they're committed to the platform long term, which means that they're not a fly by night company. They're not like trying to earn their business. They are sure. one of the best service providers in town. That's awesome. That's interesting. I didn't, um, <clears throat> excuse me. I didn't um, know all that about, I see all of your marketing stuff, obviously. Be, I mean, you, how can you not, right? You're big in the community. You have a, gr a great following. Um, I know that uh, the title company I work with, Champion Title, is very, and law, I see them in your, at your um, community events all the time. So, um, it's awesome. I know David Buckles with Encore um, and Desmond and all them. I know they're they're yeah, involved with you. So. Bad marketing or BAD marketing. <clears throat> yeah. So um, obviously I've heard a lot of amazing things, but I didn't realize that um, it's just not kind of available to the public. I, I You've got a niche and, and you've stuck to it. And that's yeah, probably exactly. why you've been able to grow to the level you've yeah. been growing to. Thank you. And we don't sell subscriptions. You know, we don't, uh, we don't distribute this to everyone. It goes straight to the top and the top service providers and some key brokers in town. And so that's, uh, that's really the idea is just to create an exclusive community of the ideally the best and brightest minds in real estate. There's obviously some always missing. Yeah, sure. <laughs> we always miss out on some, but uh, we set the parameters for the year each year and we bring out the people. So get out there and together. So get out there and kick ass. And if you get an email from you, that's a good thing. Yep. Email, text, and uh, 
<laughs> and usually we'll find you on Facebook. That means you're doing <laughs> you're doing something right, huh? That's exactly. Well, good, man. So how about personally? Everything coming along well? You, your family, everybody healthy? Absolutely. No issues? I mean, I'm just really grateful to not be in a hospital. I, I, I easily could be right now in a hospital, locked down, several states away, no visitors, where they're bringing patients in Colorado. So uh, I'm really grateful to be home and to be healthy. And, um, you know, I was, I was only a few weeks off. <laughs> and to see, to see how, um, how amazing the community kind of wrapped around you and, and helped you through that process and helped get you home and, and helped fund it and helped. I mean, just to, when I was watching that go on on Facebook, I was just, it's like, wow, this is just incredible. That was really honestly amazing. And I, I didn't see it until weeks later. And I'm going back looking through it and saying like, just shocked by what actually happened as, as I'm reading, you know, I'm finding out when you guys were essentially. <laughs> well, obviously it says a lot about who you are and your character. If, if people at that level and that quantity came out and kind of, you know, you put a go, you put a go fund me page up, you may get a couple grand. I mean, these people came together and really step, 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 stepped up for you. So that's awesome, man. Absolutely. I mean, what was crazy was that I didn't even do the GoFundMe or ask for it or know about it until, you know, my friend, my friend, Aaron Tarr had made it, you know, she had seen me in the hospital. She lived out in, in Denver and saw me and saw that things weren't all good and that it wasn't good to be stuck there. And they had me strapped down to a bed and I'm speaking gibberish and had oh. really recently had a major brain injury. And she put the thing together to try to get me airlifted home and uh, ended up just texting my family like, Hey, we made this GoFundMe and it's raised X amount. Like, how do we, how do we get this? Insane. Will it help? And then all of a sudden within, I think two days, it raised $52,000, 438 people, which if you're any of you were part of it, I want to thank you. <laughs> I can't even say thank you to 438 people easily. It's <laughs> yeah. been quite a project. It's insane just to see how Orlando and, and I guess Absolutely. Central Florida has always been, you know, a tight knit like that. So to see it absolutely come together and make it home and, and be able to get through recovery and, and get on these things and back to doing business. Right. Yeah. These, you know, pretty close to back to normal, but definitely back to doing business. Awesome, man. Well, Hey, man, this is the first time, like I said, that I really got to be face to face with you. And it's, it's definitely been an absolute pleasure. I'd love to, man, we can do this every week if you want. I, I love picking your brain, Still listening can. to uh, your thoughts, learning from you. I mean, I, I believe that you can learn from everybody you come in contact with. So, uh, and I know people that are involved with you. So, and, and I trust, I trust them and their character choice. So Thank you. <laughs> that's a good thing, man. Well, I appreciate you coming on. And if uh, I would say throw all your information in the feed, but I think that you have to be contacted by you to be, <laughs> <laughs> not necessarily but you know but but at least one of our main businesses you kind of we don't uh we don't chase anybody we just kind of work with the people that make it and that's kind of the goal at least it's just, i'm not i'm not a leader or you know i'm in charge of it i i may own the franchise but i'm really just i look at it like almost like the person that just brings together the community i'm the facilitator not the yeah. uh yeah it's like putting together a uh like a leads group or something, man. You just kind of get them together and, and everybody kind of helps each other out. Yeah. Glorified party planner. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Well, like I said, man, it was, it was just a pleasure to have you come on. Um, Thank you. I know you, I've got Boston Dave coming on. He's, he's a wild one. So we'll have fun talking to him and hearing his opinions. And then, uh, Oh yeah. I uh, spoke to him earlier. Yeah. At one, I've got the, the local surgeon coming back on to give us a COVID update. So that'll be that'll be interesting and fun. That's and awesome. hey, what as I got? said, man, I'm very appreciative that anybody even wants to get on here and talk to me. So just Listen. to take 20, 25 minutes of your time to, to meet with me, it's it's been a pleasure. And I'm thanks, man. I appreciate it. You Thank take you. it easy, man. And I appreciate talking to you, like I said. All and right. I'm glad that obviously your health is up and running. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. Yes, take sir. care. Yeah, buddy.